for some time, I have been interested in the placebo effect, which might seem like an odd thing for a magician to be interested in, unless you think of it in the terms that I do, which is uh, something fake is believed in enough by somebody that it becomes something real. In other words, sugar pills have a measurable effect in certain kinds of studies, uh, the placebo effect, just because the person thinks that what's happening to them is a pharmaceutical or a, um, some sort of a, uh, for pain management, for example. If they believe it enough, there's a measurable effect in the body called the placebo effect. Something fake becomes something real because of someone's perception of it. Uh, in order for us to understand each other, I want to start by showing you a rudimentary, very simple magic trick. And I'm going to show you how it works. This is a trick that's been in every children's magic book since at least the 1950s. Uh, I learned it myself from Cub Scout magic in the 1970s. Uh, I'll do it for you, and then I'll explain it, and then I'll explain why I explained it. Okay. So, so uh, here's what happens. A little knife, which you could examine. My hand, which you could examine. I'm just going to hold the knife in my fist like this. Right? I'll get my sleeve back. And uh, to make sure nothing goes up or down my sleeve, I'm just going to squeeze my wrist right here. Right? And that way you can see that at no time can anything travel. As long as I'm squeezing there, nothing can go up or down my sleeve. And the object of this is quite simple. Uh, I'm going to open my hand. And hopefully, if all is well, my pure animal magnetism will hold the knife. In fact, it's held so tightly in place that I can shake it. And the knife does not come off. Nothing goes up or down my sleeve. Right, so no trickery. And you can examine everything. Ta-da! <laughs> okay. So this is a trick that I often teach to young children that are interested in magic because you can learn a great deal about deception by studying this very, even though it's a very simple trick methodologically, probably many of you in the room know this trick. Uh, what happens is this. I hold the knife in my hand. I say I'm going to grab hold of my wrist to make sure nothing goes up or down my sleeve. That is a lie. The reason I'm holding on to my wrist is because that's actually the secret of the illusion. In a moment, when my hand moves from facing you to being away from you, this finger right here, my index finger, is just going to shift from where it is to a position pointing out like this. Nice one. <laughs> Someone who didn't have a childhood is out there. <laughs> So it goes like this from here, right? And as I move around, my finger shifts. And we can talk about why this is deceptive, why you don't notice there are only three fingers down here. Because the mind and the way it processes information, it doesn't count one, two, three. It groups them. But that's not really what this is about, right? Then I open my hand. Obviously, it's clinging there not by animal magnetism, but by <laughs> chicanery, my index finger being there. And then when I close my finger, same thing as I move back. This motion kind of covers the moving back of my finger. I take this hand away. You give the knife out. There's a trick you can do for your friends and neighbors. Yeah, thanks. Now, what does that have to do with the placebo effect? Well, I read a study uh, a year or so ago that really blew my mind wide open. I'm not a doctor or a researcher, so this to me was an astonishing thing. Turns out that if you administer a placebo in the form of a white pill that's like uh, aspirin shaped, just a round white pill, it has some certain measurable effect. But if you change the form that you give the placebo in, like you make a smaller pill and color it blue and stamp a letter into it, it is actually measurably more effective. Even though neither one of these things has any pharmaceutical, it's, they're sugar pills. But a white pill is not as good as a blue pill. <laughs> what? That really flipped me out. Turns out, though, that that's not even where it stops. If you um, have capsules, they're more effective than tablets in any form. A colored capsule that's yellow on one end and red on the other is better than a white capsule. Dosage has something to do with this. You know, one pill twice a day is not as good as three pills. I don't remember the statistic now, so, but the point is, these dosages have something to do with it, and the form has something to do with it. And if you want the ultimate in a placebo, you go to the needle, right? A syringe with some inert, couple cc's of some inert something, and you inject this into a patient. Well, this is such a powerful image in their mind that it, it's so much stronger than the white pill. It's really this graph, uh, well, I'll show it to you some other time when we have slides. The point is, 
the white pill is not as good as the blue pill, is not as good as the capsule, is not as good as the needle, and none of it has any real uh, pharmaceutical quality. It's only your belief that makes it real in your body and makes a stronger effect. I wanted to see if I could take that idea and apply it to a magic trick and take something that is obviously a fake trick and make it seem real. And we know from that study that when you want reality, you go to the needle. This is a seven inch hat pin. It's very, very sharp. And uh, I'm going to just sterilize it a tiny bit, okay? This is really my flesh. This is not Damien's special grown flesh. That's my skin right there. This is not a Hollywood special effect. I'm going to pierce my skin and uh, run this needle through to the other side. If you're queasy, <laughs> if, you're, if you faint easily, I was doing this for some friends in the uh, hotel room last night and some people that I didn't know and one woman almost passed out. So I suggest if, you're, if you get queasy easy, that look away for about the next 30. In fact, you know what, I'll do the first bad part behind it. You'll get to see. You can look away too if you'd like to. Uh, so here's what happens right here at the beginning of my flesh. Uh, at the lower part of my arm, I just make a little pierce. I'm sorry, man, am I freaking you out? Okay, and then just through my skin a tiny bit and out the other side like this. <laughs> now essentially we're in the same position we were in with the knife trick. <laughs> sort of. But you can't count my fingers right now, can you? So let me show them to you. That's one, two, three, four, five, yeah, Smith. I know what people think when they see this. They go, well, he was certainly not dumb enough to stab himself through the skin to entertain us for a few minutes. So let me give you a little peek. How's that look out there? Pretty good? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> And the people in the back go, okay. I didn't really see the people in the satellite room are like starting to move in now. Let me give you a good close look at this. That really is my skin. That is not a Hollywood special effect. That's my flesh. And I can twist that around. I'm sorry. I don't, if you're getting queasy, look away. Don't look at the thing. People in the back or people on video years from now watching this will go, well, yeah, that looks kind of neat and, and some sort of effect there. But if it were real, he would be, see, there's a hole there and a hole there. If it were real, he would be bleeding. Let me work up some blood for you. Yes. There it is. Normally now I would take the needle out, I would clean up my arm, and I would show you that there are no wounds. But I think in this context and with the idea of taking something fake and making it into something real, I'm just going to leave it there and walk off the stage. <laughs> I will be seeing you several times over the next few days. I hope you're looking forward to that. Thank you very much. <laughs>